What's the story, Morning Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Love and Marriage Detroit Season 1, Episode 5, Russell's Stone Will Break Your Bones. So we are still at the skating rink. Kobe has just walked out of the building because she got really upset when Brandon called her a Kobe cat and basically accusing her of coattailing on Christina. So Kobe and her husband, Russell, they've left the building and now we just have Christina and Brandon and Latoya and Anthony. So Latoya says to Christina that um, Christina feels as if Kobe is copying her. And Christina says, that's not my idea. That's what Brandon, um, that's what Brandon thinks. That's, those are Brandon's ideas. So Latoya says, well, what are you telling him to make him feel this way? Now that right there bothered me to no end. Latoya accuses Christina of believing that Kobe is copying her. Christina says, this is what Brandon has told me. This was his idea. So then Latoya says, well, what are you doing to make your husband think that? So it's like Latoya doesn't want to put any blame on Brandon whatsoever for bringing this idea out there that Kobe is copying Christina on all of her ideas. And I'm thinking to myself, Latoya, you are a, an educated woman. You are Dr. Latoya. And you're going to come up here with this archaic, backwards, misogynistic way of thinking by saying, well, if your husband is thinking these horrible thoughts, what are you doing to put those thoughts in his head? Brandon is a grown man, and I'm pretty sure he's older than Christina. He couldn't think of this all on his own. You're going to use his wife as a scapegoat for the thoughts that come into his head. Latoya, you need to go sit down somewhere because you're really starting to piss me off. So... Christina says, well, he sees everything that's been going on. And I felt like Brandon should have stepped in to defend his wife, Christina, by saying to the group that, hey, this is what I've been seeing, you know, that she is copying my wife. These are every idea that my wife's ever had or everything that my wife's ever done. Kobe will come right behind her and do the same exact thing. But he didn't do it at that moment. I think he did it later, but he should have been doing it from the very beginning. He should have been doing it when Kobe and Russell were still out there. So. Christina says that Latoya is jumping on the bandwagon. Like, you know, here you are. You're just jumping on the Kobe bandwagon. And Latoya says, well, I'm not, I'm not about all of this fakeness. And I was thinking to myself, who's being fake? Because Christina is being very real by not wanting to collaborate with Kobe. <laughs> I don't understand where the fakeness is. She... I mean, it was to the point where because Christina was not giving in, because Christina was not being apologetic, Kobe ended up leaving. So Kobe is not, I'm excuse me, Christina is not acting fake in any way. I'm like, what are you talking about? Um, you're not about the fakeness. I was really confused about that. Brandon says that this is not the first time that Kobe has copied something that was Christina. So he finally steps up and says that this isn't the first time that this is Kobe's pattern. Latoya, obviously siding with Kobe, is beyond the... Um, Latoya siding with Kobe and taking Kobe's side makes me think that her issue is she's got a deeper issue with Christina. I don't know if she's necessarily siding with Kobe because of this Harper Ray situation or if she's siding with Kobe because she really doesn't like Christina. And I think it's because she really doesn't like Christina. So Christina Latoya must have some hidden beef or something for Latoya to be so quick to jump on Kobe's side because otherwise I think Latoya being as intelligent as she is would have wanted to remain neutral because these are both your friends whatever the fight they have going on has got nothing to do with you you don't want to get involved and you don't want to choose sides you want them to work it out on their own but for you to automatically and to so quickly side with Kobe makes me think that Latoya just really doesn't see it for Christina and she's using this Harper Ray argument as a reason or justification to finally let her true feelings about Christina shine through moving on from there um Christina. So she meets up with her friend Chelsea at the storage unit. And this is where she tells Chelsea how Kobe has been riding on her coattails for at least two projects or collaborations. Now their friendship is definitely on ice. Anthony. So Anthony has his man's movement meeting. You know what? Anthony to me, first of all, let me just say this. I don't like any of these people on this show. None of these people 
are redeeming in any way to me. I thought Latoya was going to be the saving grace of the show, but no, she has her issues as well. Her, she's very, her idea of like, well, what are you doing to put those thoughts in your husband's head? I was done with Latoya. I was so done with Latoya when she said that. So now there's really nobody that I can relate to that I really understand on this show. And Anthony, Anthony and Russell, and even Brand, y'all, I can't even figure out who irks me more because they're all so, so horrible. But let's talk about Anthony. So Anthony has this man's movement thing. I mean, I'm thinking to myself, Anthony, you couldn't come up with a much clever, a much more clever title than the man's movement. I mean, that sounds so basic. But anyway, so he's got this man's movement thing where he wants men to reclaim their position in their community because black women have been doing the damn thing, you know, holding everything down, uh, raising children, going to school, starting businesses, etc., without the help of the black man. And so he's basically like, you know, we're being erased. So we need to stake our claim once again in our families and our communities, etc. So he's having a man's <laughs> movement meeting. And this is the first time that Russell and Brandon have seen each other since the whole situation at the skating rink. So Brandon shows up with this t-shirt that has his wife's face plastered all over it. Obviously, I mean, I don't even think you had to wear the shirt to let us know that you are in complete support of your wife because who else are you supposed to support? Obviously, it's going to be your wife. You don't have to like broadcast it. So Anthony starts off the meeting by talking about having a march and a showcase. And uh, after they discuss all of this, Brandon is like left in the dark. He doesn't understand exactly what's going on. So I don't know if this is the first meeting ever or if this is the first meeting that Brandon has been included in because Brandon was so lost. So these guys might have been having meetings, you know, all along, but Brandon just wasn't invited. And this is the first one because Russell really wants to confront Brandon. And maybe this is the reason why Anthony invited Brandon because Brandon was lost. Nobody else was lost but Brandon. So Russell is, he's just chomp, chomping at the bit to get to confront Brandon. So Anthony mentions how Brandon called Kobe a Kobe cat. And Russell says, if I wasn't saved, I would have broken every bone in your body. If I was Brandon, I would have said, we'll do it now. What's stopping you? That's what I would have said if I was Brandon. I mean, you want to threaten me like, th threaten me like that because I called your wife a stupid and mature name and you want to threaten me with bodily harm, then do it. You must really be wanting to do it for a very long time, way before the Kobe cat comment. So for you to have this much anger and animosity over me calling your wife a Kobe cat, if, if, if this has been brewing in you this whole entire time, go ahead and do it. That's what I would have done. So, um, this y'all, the show right here, it, it aggravates me to no end because listen to this. Then Russell says, as men, it's our job to set the example for our wives. If I could have reached through my damn television screen, I should have just turned off the television set right then and there and been done with Love and Marriage Detroit. Carlos King, where did you find these people? Why in the world? Because, you know, in this, in the black community, because we're so associated with the church and because people have interpreted the Bible as saying that men are the head of the household, this whole thing of giving a man all of your power to set the example for you, to make decisions for you, to lead you to where I, I, I'm not. No, I'm not on that bandwagon at all whatsoever, because as far as I'm concerned, there are going to be times that we're equal. And because we can't, all, if we're both equal, if me and my husband are both equal and we can't always lead at the same time, there's going to be times when I take over, there's going to be times when he takes over. And I think that's how a relationship should work. None of this where the woman always has to keep quiet. She can't speak her mind. She can't speak her opinion because the man is going to be making all the decisions and we just have to sit back and allow him to lead 100% of the time. I am not of that school of thought at all whatsoever. And that's the reason why I struggle to watch Love and Marriage Detroit because who said that you, the, the man has to set the example? Who said that? Like who, what? <sighs>
So watching this show is like traveling back to the 1950s. I, I don't even think the 1950s were even this back was even this backwards. I think it's like traveling to caveman days where men were dragging their women by the hair. That's what it's like watching the show. So Brandon apologizes uh, profusely. Oh, this is after Russell says that from here on out, there'll be no more interaction between him and his wife and Brandon and, and his wife. He says, don't you ever say my wife's name ever again. Don't you address my wife. So he goes on and on basically telling Brandon, we're done with you. Me and my wife, we are done with you and your wife. We not want no parts of y'all. We don't want to communicate with y'all. We don't want to see y'all. We want nothing to do with y'all from here on out. So Brandon starts apologizing profusely. He's like, you know what? I shouldn't have said what I said. I shouldn't have called her a Kobe cat. I apologize for that, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't think it was going to hurt you that deeply. I don't think it was all that serious, but I'm sorry if it affected you the way that it did. So Russell then uninvites Brandon and Christina to Kobe's birthday party, which I thought was extremely immature I think it's the most immature thing to invite someone and then uninvite them I, because he called your wife a damn Kobe cat like <laughs> if your wife is gonna have if you and your wife Russell are gonna have a complete breakdown this is gonna completely unravel y'all's lives because Brandon called her a Kobe cat I really wonder like what do y'all do when y'all face real adversity and real issues like real deal holy field issues what would you do then because you can't even handle the fact that your wife was called Kobe cat so y'all are going to the extreme measure of uninviting them to a damn birthday party that's so stupid and immature. That's what girls in high school do. Like, it, go ahead and keep the invitation open because they may or may not even show up. And if they do show up, wouldn't that be an opportunity to smooth things over and get back on track with y'all? Anyways, moving on. Brandon and Christina. So they're having their own little quiet time at by the uh, boat docks. And Brandon tells Christina what happened at the man's movement meeting. <laughs> and Christina thinks that Russell was just being way over dramatic. And he was, he truly was. He was probably just, you know, trying to show out for the camera. Um, he was being way over dramatic about the Kobe cat comment. So Brandon says that they're uninvited to um, Kobe's birthday party. And Christina was like, and so what? I don't care. And so Christina says that she is way more than cool with that. Cause she wasn't going to go to the damn party anyway. Anthony. Anthony to me is the biggest baby. He is the biggest baby on this damn show. The way he goes from zero to 100 with his emotions. I don't know how Latoya deals with this. So he meets up with Brandon at the Star Factory. So Brandon was given his ideas about, I guess, how the whole entertainment aspect of the man's movement was going to be. Like, I don't know, whatever the hell. I, don't even, I wasn't even paying that close to a too close attention to what the hell they were talking about but I think Brandon was trying to give some ideas about the showcase and you know the entertainment part of it and then Anthony was like oh we're done with all of that we've already you know that's already finished we've already talked about that we've already decided what's going to happen how it's going to go so we're done with all of that so Brandon was kind of like oh okay so Anthony says that he just needs Brandon to provide the talent and I'm thinking to myself, if you got it like that, Anthony, what do you need from Brandon, period? I mean, you got it like that. Y'all been having meetings behind his back. Uh, you've already made all the decisions. So why, do, why don't you go find talent somewhere else? Because I know that Brandon and his unknowns are, are not the only source of talent in Detroit. Okay, in Detroit of all places. The only place you can go for talent is to Brandon. Anywho... So Brandon asks, um, how are the profits going to be split? And then Anthony goes, well, I'm not really looking at this as a way to make money. It's just a way to bring everybody together. It just, it, this gave me PTSD of Love and Marriage Huntsville when Letitia was planning her, uh, black expo and, uh, Melody was like, so, you know, what are the profits? How much are we going to be making or whatever? And Letitia was like, we're not making money off of this. It's just to give back to the to the community. And that just it gave me so much PTSD listening to this. So Anthony says that Brandon and Christina always bring the drama. So he has a problem with uh, trusting them. Anthony says in his confessional that uh, the showcase moving, the showcase is going to move forward with or without Brandon. Well, let it move forward without Brandon. If you've got such an issue with him and his wife, let it move forward without Brandon. Why do you, why are you even in his studio asking him about anything or for anything? 
So Brandon really doesn't care because he knows that Anthony needs him more than he needs Anthony. That is for sure. Especially since um, no one's since no one's getting paid. <laughs> you know, no one's getting paid, and so it's like, you know. I don't know. This the whole thing is stupid. So Kobe's thirtieth birthday party. Here we go. Kobe already knows the what's up. She already knows that there's gonna be a birthday party for her because Anthony not Anthony, Russell did plan a surprise birthday party for her. But you know, it was on her vision board. And I guess she just Russell he couldn't think outside the box because I think I heard them say that she had her birthday party already planned out and it was on her vision board. So he just took that and plan the birthday party based on whatever was on her vision board. So if Russell really was trying to get kudos because, you know, he was really trying hard to kind of come across as husband of the year with his birthday party. If you really wanted to get kudos, Russell, you would have not even looked at her damn vision board and just thought of something completely unique and different on your own to really, really surprise her. You know what I mean? But she basically gave her exactly what she asked for, what she wanted. So what is the surprise in that? Because Russell, you cannot think outside the box because you're a, a dodo brain. So Russell says in his confessional that when Kobe shows up, she better cry. I better see a tear. Why? I mean, the party was so basic. It was so unbelievably basic. Oh. <sighs> And he, and her crying, him wanting her to cry, I think it was just it was just going to be a reflection of him, not because his wife is going to be touched and so emotional, like oh my god, baby, you made my Wallace dreams come true with this party. Not because of that, but because he just wants to show off to the people that hey, I did that as a husband, I did that because I made my wife cry. I think that's why he wanted her to cry because it was just going to be a reflection of him. So. I don't think she cried when she showed up. I don't think she cried. Anyway, so she shows up, whatever, whatever. She acts surprised, did a really poor job of acting surprised. It was just so bland. Um, Kobe and Latoya are having a conversation. Latoya feels sorry for Kobe because nobody's on her side except her husband. But who else is there to be on her side? There's only three couples on this show. You and Anthony have already, you know, made it very clear that you are going to support Kobe and Russell. So who else is there to be on her side? She's fighting with Christina and Brandon. So who else is going to be on her side besides her husband? I'm really beginning to worry about Latoya because Latoya, you're supposed to be like this really super educated woman. You're a doctor for God's sake, but sometimes you say the dumbest things. So Anthony is currently meeting up with Brandon and Christina. So it looked like at the same time that this birthday party was happening, Anthony was meeting up with Brandon and Christina and I didn't understand why would you skip your friend's birthday party to meet with the ops like I didn't get that at all that didn't make any sense to me Latoya didn't want to go because she didn't want to go with her husband because uh, she said that Christina was fake I don't know she still hasn't explained to me why she thinks that Christina is fake because she is no more fake than anybody else if you're just trying to say she's just fake in general well she's just as fake as as uh, Kobe is and so, okay, uh, Russell wants the two couples to get together at some point and have a conversation. Why? You uninvited them to the damn birthday party. You got as petty as that. Now you want to meet up and smooth things over when you could have done that at the damn birthday party. Anthony wants everyone to rebuild and give each other grace because no one's perfect. So we're at the scene where Anthony has met up with Brandon and Christina and he's like, we all make mistakes and we're going to make more mistakes in the future. So we should just off, you know, whatever. So Brandon says in his confessional, he can keep that. It's just a uh, business now. So Brandon is not trying to hear anything that Anthony is trying to say about reconnecting or rebuilding the friendships because he's like, from now on, it's just going to be business between us. Brandon and Christina don't understand how the women's personal business affected the men working together on the showcase, which is like a really good question because Christina and Kobe having their issue with Harper Ray, why does that affect how the men are going to conduct their business with the men's movement and the march and the showcase because like in most of these reality tv shows the husbands don't let the women's issues bother them their women can be practically like stabbing each other like literally stabbing each other with butcher knives and the men are still going to be buddy buddy and still get along so i don't understand how the harper ray thing bled into you know 
Anthony not wanting to invite Brandon to the meetings for the men's movement, uh, Russell uninviting them to the birthday party and threatening to break all of his bones because of y'all's wives, stupid social media, Harper Ray collaboration beef. Are y'all serious? Anthony says, I'm not about to do business with someone who's snaking someone that we're cool with. That's also very immature. That's also very immature. Let the women handle their own issues. Let Russell and, um, let Russell and Brandon handle their own issues. You just try to be a friend to both of them and just stay out of the mess. But you want to get in. Not only does Anthony want to get involved with the mess, but he perpetuates it as well. He stirs the pot as well, because as long as everybody's beefing with each other, he comes off looking kind of squeaky clean because he ain't got no problems with nobody. Because Anthony always wants to prove that everything is good in his hood. His marriage is great. His friendships are great. Everybody else is the, uh, they're the ones with the problems and with all the drama, but not him. Him and um, Precious LaToya. This show is so difficult to watch. I do like it. I do enjoy watching it because you want a show to make you think and you want to watch a show that makes you kind of like react instead of watching a show that bores you to tears. So this show definitely makes me react in a negative way, but I still react. And so I'm going to continue watching it for sure. Uh, but it's just very, fr my, my blood constantly is boiling when I'm watching how misogynistic all of these men are. It's just disgusting. Anyways, um, I have a feeling that if it comes back for season two, one of these couples won't be back. I'm not sure which, but I have a very strong feeling that one of these couples will not be back because I don't think any of them are looking good out there to the people. Anyway, let me know what y'all think. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.